Hey guys, welcome to a new video. If you're new here, I'm April. I'm a skincare and cosmetic chemist, and I talk about all things skincare, back end, front end, of all things skincare. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that like button for me down below. Subscribe to the channel because we're here every week, every single week, talking about skincare. Today's video is when I can't believe I haven't made before today. Like, what is happening, April? I was just thinking, wait. All these ingredients that we constantly speak of, hyaluronic acid, tranexamic acid, niacinamide, what if there's a new watcher or an old watcher who really doesn't even know what these things mean? What if there's someone who's just like, Girl, I'm just trying to make it by. I'm trying to figure out what these products are. And you just throw out all these ingredients and I'm just like confused. If you're that person, this video is for you. If you've been trying to understand what almost all of these ingredients that are just kind of part of the skincare influencer culture at this point, this video is for you, okay? Today we're gonna be talking about what these ingredients mean, niacinamide, retinol, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and of course, AHAs and BHAs. So if you're interested in that, definitely keep watching. First off, retinol. The giants in the room. <laughs> I feel like everyone and their mom is using or has used a retinol at some point, so I feel like this is definitely the best one to get started with. Throughout this portion of the video, I might interchange retinol with retinoids. What you really need to know is that retinoid is the family and retinol is a part of the family. Basically what that means is there is different conversion steps to get to tretinoin, which is the prescription version, and that's what our skin has receptors for. So you have retinol palmitate, which is the least active, then you have retinol, you have retinaldehyde, and then you have tretinoin, which is prescription. Aside from that, there's other forms of retinol, like adapalase, isotretinoin and a whole bunch of others that we're not really going to talk about. Retinol is a vitamin A derivative. It's gotten from vitamin A. It's mostly used for skin cell turnover so it basically helps the newer cells in the bottom layer of your skin come to the top layer faster. So basically if you're dealing with dull skin it helps to renew, regenerate, refresh your skin if you will. Also it helps with skin texture, pore size control and just an overall renewal of the surface layer of your skin. So it's such an important ingredient to have especially as we age. It's very important to have something that continues to help our skin renew faster. Over the counter products I love for retinol, I'm gonna start with one for sensitive skin, the Polish Choice 0.3% retinol with 2% Bacuccio. Bacuccio actually is a plant form of retinol, so if you want something that's more gentler for your skin, I definitely recommend going the Bacuccio route. For more normal skin, I recommend the 0.5% retinol from The Ordinary, really great product. Then if you wanna advance a little bit more, so something that could easily convert to retinoic acid, I recommend Murad's retinol treatment that just came out not too long ago. Really good product. My mom's using that one right now and she loves it. Finally, for more of a prescription straightened retinoid, I recommend Adapalene. This one needs to be prescription, but now it's over the counter. It has 0.1% Adapalene, and people who struggled to have retinol work before have seen a lot of improvement in their skin with this one. Next, we're going to talk about niacinamide, very popular in the skincare community. Niacinamide is a vitamin B derivative, so it's gotten from vitamin B, specifically vitamin B3. Niacinamide works a different way than other hyperpigmentation inhibitors. It actually stops the transfer of melanocytes into the keratinocytes, which is basically where the top layer of the skin is. It also helps in soothing the skin and also controlling oil production as well as pore size. I have a video where I talk more about niacinamide up here. I wouldn't recommend going over 5% when it comes to niacinamide because over 5% studies have shown that it actually causes more irritation versus actually treating your skin. So stay between that 2 to 5% mark. Some products that I love over the counter for niacinamide are Mele's niacinamide. This one has 3% niacinamide. It's actually formulated by black and indigenous people of color dermatologists. Next is Glossier's 5% niacinamide serum. It also has zinc which helps to control True redness, good molecules, discoloration correcting serum. This one has 4% niacinamide plus tranexamic acid. Egg Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Plus Niacinamide Serum. This one has 4% niacinamide as well as a sunscreen by Elta MD that has 5% niacinamide. So it's healing and pigmentation as well as protecting you from UV rays. Next category here is alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. These ones are really, really popular, especially among people with dry skin. Those people who have compromised skin barrier that isn't really turning over that top layer of the skin. They don't have the hydration to help with the top layer of their skin. AHA primarily work on the top layer of the skin. BHAs work more going to the pores on the top layer of the skin and declogging anything that could potentially cause a buildup or acne on the skin. Some products I love in this category are Glow Recipes AHA BHA Serum, Polish Choice Acid Acid Serum, The Ordinary Glycolic Acid Serum. Next category is Vitamin C. And before I get into Vitamin C, I actually want to debunk something really quick. Vitamin C does not treat hyperpigmentation. A lot of people are misinformed that it does. Vitamin C is primarily an antioxidant. And what that means is it basically helps protect the skin from radical damage that we get from UV rays, it helps basically stop photo aging. So basically all of the bad stuff that the sun wants to do to our skin, it helps to mitigate the effects from UV rays. It has brightening properties as well as nourishing properties for the skin. Some products I love in this category are Naturium, L'Oreal, Murad, La Roche-Posay, and a whole bunch of others. I have several videos of vitamin C, but you can definitely check out this video right here. I talk more in depth about vitamin C. Last and final category here is hyaluronic acid. And also I want to debunk something really quickly. Hyaluronic acid actually is not the most moisturizing humectant there is. Glycerin is 
actually a lot more moisturizing so don't believe the hype as much as it is very very moisturizing and helps to plump our skin it's not the one that does that the most there's three forms of it there's hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid this one sits at the top layer of the skin doesn't really penetrate sodium hyaluronate has smaller molecules that goes deeper into the top layer of the skin and finally acetylated hyaluronic acid that goes really really deep into the skin but this one is not using a lot of formulations because it could be irritating to the skin this product that found actually has all three forms of hyaluronic acid they had a level hyaluronic acid serum i also love l'oreal paris 1.5 percent hyaluronic acid as well as vichy's hyaluronic acid i really recommend not going over two percent with your hyaluronic acid because not only will it potentially cause irritation on your skin but it could also not be compatible with other skincare products that you might be using in your skincare routine but yeah that covers all the popular ingredients i'm sure you guys have been hearing about buzzwords around the skincare community i hope this really helps someone who's kind of just starting into skincare and is just trying to figure out what all these ingredients mean i have a separate video i made on tranexamic acid and afrobutin you can check that out at the end of the video but yeah i think that's it for this video thank you so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time bye